Hello my sweethearts, it's Tara. Welcome back to Tara's Take. So today I was going to come along and show you how I made this little pocket tuck notebook kind of thing. <laughs> um, I got the inspiration from something I did with Tina eons ago, but I added, you know, a different flair to it. And um, yeah, so let's get started. So what you're going to need is <clears throat> you're gonna need your glue, bone folder and scissors. If you don't have a bone folder, of course, use your scissor handles. Um, some paper, and I am using 12 by 12s, and then I have some paper to go on the inside. I've got like three or four sheets here. You can have as many or as little as you want, depending on how thick you want it to be. I chose some um, papers that I could use that would not, uh, I wouldn't have to worry about the way the print was going and all that kind of stuff, okay? I thought I would do the first one. Let's see. I think I'm going to use this one. I haven't done it with this paper. We'll see how it goes. Um, the one I did as a prototype was made actually with a super bright pink, um, and as you can see, white backed, and I just distressed the places and covered also the places that I wanted to cover. This is covered by another piece of paper that I did prior to gluing everything shut. Um, so yeah, I used a really bright piece of scrapbook paper that I didn't really like, just because I wasn't sure if this was gonna work out the way I wanted it to, so I was just giving it kind of a run through, and it ended up coming out really good, so I decorated it and distressed everything, so kind of dulled it down. These papers that are here are from different kits. This is, I think this is a background from one of Tina's digis, and this is another scrapbook paper that I don't even know what it is. Um, can't remember. These are a couple of Tina's digis. I just made a couple of little stacked pockets there for some tags, and yeah, so let's get started, and I'll show you how to do this fun little piece. So, what we're going to do is we're going to be folding this into thirds okay and you're gonna cut this wherever you want the height if you want it taller cut it higher if you want it shorter cut it shorter I just did mine around six six and a half inches um, I'm just gonna come in about right here to the center of my paper and cut this in half okay? you know it depends on how big your book is or if you want to give these away as like gifts on their own because they are pretty cool. They'd be a fun little thing to give in a card or something. Um, just to express, you know, your love. It's got their little, you know, it's got tags and you can fill it with as much stuff as you want. So yeah, it's kind of fun. Okay. So let me even this out because of course I can't cut a straight line to save my life. <laughs> okay. Now, so what we're going to do is we're going to bring basically we could do all the measuring and stuff but you know me I don't really want to do all that so I'm gonna what I'm doing is kind of like what Tina does just bringing this in so that I can see it's even as much as possible when I fold it down um, that it's gonna you know kind of close over on each other and what what doesn't work I will trim off okay so I'm gonna do these in because this is going to be, these two pieces will be the notebook portion, okay? So when we open it, it'll be like that, okay? So you'll also want to decide where you want your, uh, what do you call it, which, which page, side you want, I apologize, which side you want to come out. Okay, so now as you can see with this one, okay? This is going to actually be this way. So we're going to fold this piece down as close to our line here as we can get it without going over. We don't want to go over. We want it to fold shut. Okay. And that's going to flip over like that. Okay. So it's at this point that I had glued another piece of paper for my backdrop because I wanted it to, uh, 
and I'm trying to pull this just a little bit and do a little more of a fold because it's not quite coming to the edge. So hopefully I can get it to do that. Let's see. There we go. That's better. And so you've got your little pocket and then you've got the place where we're going to put the papers and we're going to do a tuck and then we'll build from there. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead on this inside piece and instead of leaving it blank, I'm wondering if my really grungy paper that I did would look okay in this. I'm going to check here. I'm going to cut it. And since I'm going to be gluing this pocket shut, it doesn't have to go all the way to the bottom. Me being, you know, me, I'll probably make it go to the bottom, but... Um, I just wanted to kind of check and see if I like it. I think it looks kind of cool. It's very grungy. So I'm going to, this is super, I don't know how I made it uneven considering I just, I was using that as my guide, but I still did. Okay. So I'm going to glue this piece down. Okay. You're going to want to put some glue on this so it stays down for you. Doesn't have to be a ton, you know, we're just holding this into itself, so it should be easy enough. I guess it would depend on your paper. Can you tell I've been using this as a dry wipe all weekend on stuff? It's totally dingy. <laughs> okay. Now, I am going to trim off this edge. This is super thin. It's that dictionary paper, um, the vintage dictionary I have. And so, yeah, it's super, super thin. I don't even know how good this is going to work. I'm going to try to even this out. I don't... I had folded this side, so that's the problem. It's kind of... It's kind of buckling on me a little bit. I don't know if I'm going to use it or not. Let's see here. As long as I can get it, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it'll be okay. I'm gonna use my tacky glue though on this part because this is so thin. I don't, I don't want the glue to show through. And that art glitter glue will give me trouble. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the tacky glue because I can, I can kind of spread it a little better. For some reason, art glitter glue dries really. The lines are very sharp, and um, on some stuff, I don't, I don't like that. The glue's, I'm having a hard time squeezing it. It's cold. It's chilly here. Actually chilly, believe it or not, in Arizona. And, uh, yeah, it is the end, what, mid-October almost, and we're, uh, we're cooling down. I get up in the morning and take Tippy outside, and it's it's pretty chilly out there. It's nice. I, I wore a sweater today, and I loved it. I loved it. I miss uh, I miss the cold when I and it gets hot. I'm. It's funny. I was raised here. I grew. You know, I was born in Indiana, and I grew up here. And I'll be honest. I never grew to be like, oh, I love the sun, you know, or I'm used to it, or. <laughs> I mean, I deal with it every year, you know, have my whole life, but to be honest, I live for the winter. I honestly live for the winter. See, I left way too much on it. Yeah, I live for the winter, <laughs> personally. <laughs> Can't wait until I can layer and, you know. That could partially be too, because I'm heavy, I'm too heavy and I'm, you know, more comfortable layering clothing, but I kind of was always like that. Even when I was slimmer, I, I still, I like my winter time. Okay, so we've got that ugly, dingy background, which I'm going to do this one kind of, you know, grunge, so that'll be fun. Just trimming all my edges, make sure everything's evened out. Does not look even still. Look at that. It's because this paper is so flimsy and thin. <clears throat> okay. Let me see. We're good on the sides. 
Just there. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and add some glue to my edge. You don't have to glue this completely shut. You could just do the bottom and leave that open. Um, you have that option, of course. I am going to... You could even leave this open and like decorate inside here too if you wanted. It's totally up to you. I mean, this kind of stuff is so, you know, preferential. Okay. I just kind of like mine shut, at least for now. Maybe I'll do one with it open and have like a, a little tuck notebook on the, or pockets on the inside and then do pockets on the and my notebook on the other side sometime but for now I'm good with that so there we go so as you can see we're part of the way there now we're gonna make a little um, we're gonna make this little corner now I gotta be honest with you guys I was really irritated this morning because <laughs> I know it's it's funny I made this uh, this one over the weekend and I sat down and I just made it. I don't know what I did. I just went ahead and sat down and made my little tuck and it was adorable and I was like, oh cool, you know. I go to sit down and make it this morning and I cannot remember exactly how I did this. And it, cause it's a two-sided tuck and I know there's a way and I'm not gonna go looking for a video. So what I did was I came up with my own little, um, my own little way. Again, I wanted to use one of my cutoffs from Tim Holtz. This one's kind of fun. If I can get that corner in there. Well, it's got the bird. I don't want to kill the birdie. Um, let me see. It's just, but yeah, I was so annoyed with myself. I'm like, what, how did I do that? I know I know how to do it because I did it. <laughs> Let's see. You know what, maybe I'll do this one and use this this side. I like that, the green with the, because it'll kind of match that, yeah. So, okay, so here's what I did. <laughs> I brought this up, okay, at a half, like, as big as I want the tuck, I want the corner to be. Okay, so, you know, we're going to want it to be like that. So. What I'm doing is about a half an inch out, I'm going to cut right here. And you don't even have to do it a half inch, but I'm doing it because it's easier to fold and this paper is super thick, so I'd rather give myself that um, leverage. Okay, and move this out of my way. Now, I'm going to trim this corner off, and I'm going to trim this corner off, just cutting them straight off, no biggie. Um, and then I'm going to do whatever that's called at the corner here. And actually, I'll probably just go ahead and take it straight across better. Because I really, I'm only using this. These are going to be my folds. Okay, and I'm just going to fold this in. And the reason I'm doing it like this is because when I tried to just glue it down without these little folds, it was blocking the corner tuck from tucking in. It's it, If I was doing it just on one side, it wouldn't matter, but because we're doing it on both sides of the page. This is much easier, okay? So I just took some glue along this little edge here. You can put a little bit more just so it holds good. At least my art glitter glue, it doesn't move as easily, so I'm gonna put a little bit more, okay? And now I'm just gonna hold these two right here and go down, come on. Get down. Now, this is what made me irritated. I, yesterday, or Saturday, when I did this the first time, I actually folded it into the triangle correctly. For some reason, my brain is not working. I will end up going on a video probably and watching and being like, oh yeah, that's what I did. But I'm just trimming this edge off, okay? I don't remember trimming that edge off on Saturday. I think I folded it some way that it just worked, but yeah. So anyway, now we have our little corner and it's gonna fit right there, okay? And I am gonna put a thin bead of glue. Can you guys see okay? I'm gonna put a thin bead of glue on both this edge and this edge. Okay, and then when I tuck it on there, it's gonna, you know, that'll hold it real good. Oops, 
I want to make sure. Okay. Now you don't have to do it on this front panel. You could do it on the back panel, or you don't have to put a tuck at all. It's totally up to you, of course. But I like the little pocket. It's cute. I think it looks fun. You could even do two. You could do one on each side. That's a good idea. Um, yeah, so there you go. Now you have your little tuck. Okay, and the reason I did the, like I said, the reason I did the fold is because then it gives you room all the way to the edge. See, otherwise this would have gotten stuck and wouldn't have fit directly on there. But with that little fold, you have that edging, okay? Now, I'm going to go ahead and use the same paper I just used, if I can. Let me see if I can make this work. I have a second piece. And what I did for the back pockets, I'm going to go ahead and, let's see, let's make sure this is even before I go to snipping and doing all that stuff. Um, I'm just trimming this, making sure my edge is relatively even. Okay. <clears throat> and I'm gonna round my corners, like you know I love to do. Hopefully I didn't mess it up. I, I don't think I rounded the corners on the other one. And, okay, so it's gonna be one pocket. And I just, I made one bigger than the other. Now these look like they're about the same. I don't think, just depends on how deep you want your pocket to be, I guess. Um, if you're gonna, And then this side is trimmed, of course. Okay. Now, I think what I'll do, let me see here. Okay. I might use the bug side. That's kind of cute, too. Yeah. So all I did was, <clears throat> here I think I'll trade this, let me look, yeah all I did was do a stack. So I glued one in, and I know you can do this with like three different sizes and I've had kits that came with those and they're really cute. <clears throat> I'm just kind of creating the effect of stacked pockets. And let's see. I'm trying to think, do I still want to round those? Okay, look. I kind of like it like that, so. And then I just glue all three sides again. Super easy. But it makes it a cute little booklet, you know, little notebook slash pocket. You could even do a third piece here um, if we wanted to, but I don't think I have another piece big enough in that. I don't really want to cut up my other ones, so we'll see. Maybe I'll decorate down here with something cute. Okay, so there's our two pockets. We have our tuck. We have our pocket here, our tuck here. Look at that, it's loose. I told you that paper is like super flimsy and I didn't get enough glue up here at the top, I guess. There we go, that should hold. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to our notebook part. Let me grab my papers. I used, on that other one, I think I used three. I wanna say three. I'm gonna try for four in this one, I believe, because, I don't know, I think it'd be, let's see, so. My papers have been coffee dyed. What I'm doing is I'm looking, if there's anybody who hasn't 
done something like these before. I'm looking to see that I have a little bit of space <clears throat> at the top between the paper and that. A little bit of space here where I'm going to put it in. And then down here, I'm going to do my fold with giving myself some space as well. So I'm trying to make these as even as possible because they are coffee dyed their own. Um, yeah. They're not uh, exactly wanting to cooperate, but okay. All right, so I'm going to fold this in. So that I've got right about there. Maybe come in just a tiny bit more. Yeah, just a tiny bit more over. Ugh. So I know where my fold is here. All right. And now I'm going to get my ruler and my um, my exacto knife or box cutter, whatever you want to call it. Make sure you have a surface, of course, that you're not going to harm in any way. Okay. bit. Okay. There's that side. The fold, of course, is a little bit buckled, which is normal for paper that's been folded over multiple sheets of paper. I'm not worried about it. I just want it to be as close to it as possible. So. Okay. All right. Now, what I did with this one is what I did in our other book. I glued it. Okay. So it's all glued in, and as you can see, it's fine. It's not sticking to each other or anything. It's good. You just have to be careful when you do it. Um, you can also staple it. If you have a long staple, I need to get one. I haven't gotten one yet. That is a goal of mine, is to get one of those um, deep staples that you know that you can just take over a big space. But this one, I would have to bend it too much, and I really don't want to do that. So you can also sew this in. We could sew it in, which I don't want to deal with either. So <laughs> I'm just going to glue. We're going to glue. I'm going to make sure that this paper is, you know, bent folded bent folded really well Oops. you know I've got a good crease all the way down I'm gonna go ahead and put the mm, I think I'll do it on the thing which is what I did originally so I'm gonna go ahead and put the glue here thin bead of it just like I showed you guys in the I believe it was the altar book when we did the tip-ins and it takes a minute for it to dry you know you're gonna have to wait for a second <clears throat> And I do them one sheet at a time. So you just sit that down on top of there. And let it sit for a second. And then you can also take like your bone folder or something that's shaped kind of like the spine and give it a little edge. And then I go in and wipe after I know it's, you know, it's sitting there for a minute. I go in and just wipe it a little bit. Okay, I'm going to do the next sheet, wipe your glue tip off so it's nice and you have a nice thin stream going out. You want it to be, okay. <clears throat> I'm trying to make sure I get the right edge because the shape of the paper and like so it'll match up where we cut it, you know. I'm just going to need to go down just slightly to match. There we go. I'm going to 
get my bone folder again, give it a little push, just a little push, see if there's a, there's not a ton. If you put a really thin bead, you're not going to have a lot of glue to clean up, um, you know, so it doesn't like smoosh out onto the other pages and tear them. That's the goal, is to get it to dry, and this art glitter glue dries so quickly that it, it you can see it does work pretty good for this. And I'm barely squeezing it. I'm not I'm not trying to get a lot out. Just that little bead. Okay. Let's see, this is four pages, so you've got 16 pages of journaling space. And it's it's a decent sized little little book for an insert in a journal, or you could put it in the front or back pocket of your journal. You could have it as a floating piece. You can glue it in as well if you have, you know, a backing that, like if this backing were stark white and I didn't want to have to distress or anything, I could glue it in and it would be good. Um, just wipe up whatever excess we have, not much. I'm a little bit off right here, I can see, but that might be my cutting. Who knows? I'm not going to worry about that. I just want to make sure that I get the seam even as possible. I think I went off because I scraped it. And let's see. Am I off on my... Yeah, I'm a little bit off on this one. So let me wipe that. I don't want it to dry there in the wrong spot. I'm going to fold this and see. Okay, there. Now I can see my seam again. Okay. Right. Okay. I kind of like doing it this way. I want to get me some book binding glue because <laughs> I think that would probably work even better, than, of course, than art glitter glue, but I haven't bought any yet. Oops, see, I'm a little low on this one. Let's pull this up before it dries. There we go. Okay, so now you have your little no so notebook ready to be decorated. And like I said, and the pages are not, you know, they'll, it'll dry and it'll be adorable and yeah. So let's see, what do we want to do? What time is it? And how long did that take me? About 27 minutes, 28 minutes to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and decorate this little guy. Um, what do I want to do? Let me see. I have some, like, little, I don't know, little things over here. I don't even know what's in here. Let me check. It's like a, um autumn slash a little bit kind of Halloween-y. I don't know. It's not really Halloween. It's more autumn, but it's cute. I don't know how good it, let's see, how good would it look? Nah, I'm thinking more Tim. And, uh, let me see. Oh, I got some of these. These are cool. The other day. I do not know where I got these from, but let's see what they would look like some distress yeah I hope you like these and if you give them a try and let me know okay this was by the way I don't know if I said this at the beginning this was save your cash use your stash day and I just wanted to use things you know like my 12 by 12 pads and um, things that I knew I had already in my cabinet So that I didn't have to pay for anything new. Plus, you know, I'm leaving in two days, or is it two days or three days? Today's Wednesday. Oh, actually, I'm on my trip when you guys see this, but, oh, these are cute, look. 
I like these. Um, let's see if I can... I was kind of thinking maybe do one of my tears and put them like in the corner or something. Um, yeah, I was, I was going to say we're going to be... When you guys see this, I will be in Flagstaff. Uh, and that is where I'm going to be spending the money. That's <laughs> when I'm up there. So, oopsie. Yeah, so, should be fun. Should be fun. Now, what can I, where can I put this? See, there we go. He goes good there. I'm going to put him there. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. My husband's like, so, this means no Christmas list, right? <laughs> He said something to me today, and then he goes, oh, I am so going to pay for that. And I go, oh, you are so going to pay for that. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> I said, trust me, mister, you are so going to pay. Uh, he always jokes that we plant seeds in each other's mind. Like, he, he's always making comments about food. Okay, Courtney loves to eat. My Cordy Pie, that's his nickname. I call him Cordy Pie. He absolutely loves to eat. And so he's like, I'll make it up to you when we go up there. You know, or he'll say stuff about food and I'll look at him and he goes, oh, I promise I'll make it up to you when we go when we go up there. And I said, oh, yes, you will. It was something about food. Because everything we talk about is pretty much food. Um, I'm wondering if I can... I kind of... I don't want the whole thing. I just want this part, this flower. Just like that. <clears throat> hmm. Let's see. Ooh, a little bit of that glue came up. I want that as flush as possible. Ooh, that's pretty. I'm going to have it peeking out of that tuck. The little tuck spot. Oopsie. So, yeah. I got it. Oh, and then um, one of you had recommended I go to make sure I hit savers. The bummer part is, Christina, if you're watching, um, I won't be there on Monday. I'm going on Thursday, and we're leaving on Sunday to come home. And Monday's like our recuperate day, you know, and get everything unpacked and stuff like that. So I'm going to miss the half-off sale, dude. I'm so sad. I told him last night, he goes, but honey, we're not going to be there on Monday. I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I am. Um, we have savers down here, of course, in Phoenix, but I have not been to a savers in about four years. And I like savers a lot. I do. I hit Goodwill and stuff, but I'm kind of irritated with Goodwill because they raised all their prices, you know, to the point where you're paying like almost more for some of their stuff than you would pay in the store for something brand new. I mean, I find that very annoying of them. I just do. I don't know if all of you feel that way, but I do. I just, I reached over to grab a template and I dropped one of them. Shoot. I was thinking that maybe I would do uh, some stenciling here on this part. Cause I got all these squares and stuff and I was thinking that would be kind of fun to do like a block look on this part too. We're going to try it. We're just going to go for it. I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know, but we're going to try And I'm going to use black because, well, should I use black? I should probably use brown. I'm just worried it won't show up. Let's see. We'll give it a shot. Oh, it'll show. There we go. I don't want to get it up onto the um, this part. I just thought it'd be kind of fun as a backdrop. I'll be doing something to cover it, but you know. Okay, this is a test here. Without moving the stencil and getting it just in the inside of the pocket. There we go. Yay. So now we have blocks and we have a blue fence and <laughs> I know it's just random. This is for fun, right? I'm just having fun here. Let's see. Hoot for Al Coffee. He's cute. I wish he didn't have Hoot for Al Coffee on him though. 
Nobody, I don't really know that I want to have Hoot for Owl Coffee on there. Oh, these guys, look at them. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. Uh, let's just do a little collaging, shall we guys? Let's have some fun. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to lose the pumpkin, but I kind of want it torn, so... Can't have both. You're going to lose a little bit of the pumpkin. That's just the way it is. Now, Bunny Man here, he is adorable. He reminds me a little bit of the rabbit from Velveteen Rabbit. He remembers that book. Awesome book. Awesome, awesome book. Yep. Okay. He's just got that long-eared look to me a little bit. Oh, I watched the coolest video this morning. Um, my daughter sent me a video, and it was like a reel that was linked after the reel that she sent me. She sent me one about this guy who crochets. He's a designer, and wow, he does an amazing job. But anyway, the video that popped up afterward was about a pit bull and how she was... It, it said, you know, mommy pit bull goes from violence to, you know, sweetheart... You know, and it showed the process this woman took at this pit bull sanctuary. She went to the the pound, and they had written on this dog's cage. She had just given birth to her babies, and they had written on this cage, you know, do not touch, don't come near me, I can't be trusted, in red, you know, she will bite, blah, blah, blah. And, and she would, yeah, she was barking and growling because she was defending her children, her little puppies, and she had a whole big litter. She had, like... And she looked young, too, so, and she had been astray and on the streets, and she was just really, really scared. And this lady that worked with her, she took her home in a cage, and she fed her outside of the cage and would say, touch, touch, to this dog, and so that the dog got used to touching her. And by the time she was done, this dog was so sweet, and now she's up for adoption, and I bet it's so hard for that lady to give her up because... You know, she she got so close to her, but her whole staff, because she runs, like I said, she runs a sanctuary for for pit bulls, and her whole staff got so close to this dog. Um, I can't remember where she was located, but yeah, it was just a beautiful, beautiful little video. I loved seeing that dog go from being so fearful to having confidence in human beings again. And you know, I just hate to see animals abused. I really do. I am. Um, we have, you know, our neighbors I've talked to you guys about, my landlord's son, stepson, and uh, his wife and their little boy. And, you know, they're they're not bad kids. I mean, they're, they're just, they're quiet. They're super quiet. But, you know, when they do make noise, it's like slamming doors. And, I mean, there's certain things they've done since they've lived here that are not very neighborly. And, um... You know, like they never ever clean up their dog's poo in the front yard. Um, my husband goes out, Cordy goes out there once a week and cleans tippies. <clears throat> and, or I will go. And uh, they absolutely never ever clean their dog's poo. And, you know, and she's a Labrador and she's a puppy. And she's super cute. And, and her name is Nova and she's a very sweet dog. Well, the sad part for us is we have started hearing her cry like a dog that's getting hit and I gotta tell you guys it's I told my husband he goes look we can't just report them because we don't know you know because sometimes puppies are you know extra he goes we can't we can't report them yet we don't know what's going on but I'm just like I, I if, if it comes down to it and I keep hearing this or I do see them doing something um yeah so I'm I don't know how do you guys feel about that I I'm, I'm torn because, like he said, we don't know for sure that's what's happening. Um, but I do know, like yesterday, I heard him outside with her, and he was, you know, making noises to come, come, you know, and, and he was clapping his hands. No, but come. And she would not come to him. And I've, I've seen her cower down to him um, when he went to pick her up and carry her into the house and stuff like that. And so I know something's going on. I, I can't prove that, you know, he's doing anything, but that's not legal. You know, you can't just hurt your animal because you think you're training them. I mean, I don't think, 
it's because they want to hurt their animal. I think they actually think they're training it, but this dog is crying, you know, it's not, yeah. It's kind of disconcerting, I'll be honest. And I'm minding my own until I see, you know, if I ever see it, but yeah. Keep little Nova in your prayers. <laughs> she's, she's a sweet little thing. Um, yeah, anyway. This little booklet went a totally different direction than I was thinking, but these were here and they're so much fun and it's like, you know, it's that season and look at that. They're just so cute. <laughs> this little squirrel, should he go up here? Oh, I wish I could hear you guys. No, I think he needs to be here. He's too adorable to hide. We're just gonna kind of collage around and have some fun with these little guys. I guess since there's bugs in the back on the on that one pocket, you know, nature theme was gonna be the way to go. <laughs> I don't, I don't, as you know, I don't usually go nature theme. I, um, but I am trying really hard to get out of my norm, as you also know, and have some fun with uh, other stuff besides beautiful vintage Victorian ladies and lace and elegance and all that. Yes, I know, they're still all over my stuff, but at the same time, I am trying to break away. <laughs> Praise God. You know, he gives us an imagination for a reason. We don't need to get stuck in the same old rut all the time. I'm talking to me, not you guys. I'm sure you guys aren't. Look, a lady. <laughs> she goes with this kit. Oh, I love these little mushrooms. They're so cute. I do. I really like those. Um... You know what I have, and I'm not sure which box it's in. I, I don't have it out. It's in one of my little, uh, I'm going to use another one of these, but up here. It's in one of my boxes, but it's uh, mushrooms. I got them from Louise Heinzel, her kit. It's one of her kits, and they are so cool. And it, there was just a ton of them in that kit. Oh my gosh, I cut and cut and cut and cut and cut. There's pages and pages of awesome mushrooms. I should pull them out. Because of because of it being the time of year it is even too, so. I may pause this so that I can get down here and grab them because I don't want you guys to have to listen to me grunt. <laughs> okay. Now, my little rabbit friend. He's so sweet. Hello, my little friend. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> yes, that's me. Okay, I am a geek. I do those things. Those weird voices. Yeah. The bad part is you guys are getting to know me more and more, and so you're just going to get to see more and more of my weirdness, and I'm sorry. I'm apologizing in advance. Ah, so cute. I love the rabbit. Where do we want him? Oh, he's, I think, kind of cockeyed right there. Yeah, I do. So this front part is looking pretty cute. And, oh, gee, whistle sticks. And you know I'm going to put some gold because I can't help myself. Plus, it's just, um, hello. It looks so awesome on everything. Okay, I'm going to set him right there. Right there. Okay, and you know what? I've got this ribbon. Ooh, ooh. Actually, I want to show you guys this. I got this stuff last year at the Dollar Store at Dollar Tree. I have no idea if it's there again this year, but it's it's the tool, but with the gold leaf on it and the copper colored leaf. And I was thinking, I did these over the weekend. I'm not sure if you like them. I, it's just a quickie. I, I made two cards just to see, and it, it stayed down real well, and I thought I'd sew around them. And, um, yeah, what do you think? Do you guys like those? Would you like to make some stuff with these, with this? Let me know, okay? Let me know in the comments if you would like that, because I've got it sitting over here just in case you would. Now, what I'm thinking is this ribbon that is <laughs> really long would just about look adorable somewhere on here yeah oh yeah we're gonna put that on there okay so now we have the inside and I'm gonna be right back I'm gonna look for those mushrooms okay hold on
Okay, guys, I'm back. It took me a minute to find these. They were in the last place that I wanted, I would have thought they would have been, <laughs> of course. <laughs> but I found them. I had them mixed in with Tina's stuff, which I had separated all her things, and I stuck them in here because of the butterflies and stuff. Yeah. <sighs> I wore myself out looking for them. I was getting so upset. I was like, I know they're here. <laughs> Okay, so I was thinking, let's see, I've got so many, my goodness. Oh, that's pretty. Isn't that pretty? I love that butterfly. He looks so cool. Let's see, he's even in a nice little frame. things down see what looks good see what's what real quick here let's see we got some pretty mushrooms look at all these like I said these are Louise Heinzel and I believe that she is linked in my about section um, I'll double check after I get this video uploaded because I would like for you guys to have access to these if you want them because they're fun and if you like nature stuff these are like perfect Perfect, perfect. Let's see. These look like cone heads. <laughs> Who remembers the cone heads? Who's old enough to? Show hands. I do. I'm old enough. Obviously, I said it. <laughs> SNL. If anybody out there is listening who doesn't know where the cone heads come from, Dan Aykroyd and Jane Curtin with Lori. Uh, what was Lori's last name? can't remember now. Anyway, they were funny. Let's see. Hmm. Let's see. I was looking because I was also thinking in this back part here I could do something with the mushrooms. Yeah, I got some here with more of a green theme. Yeah, let's put these guys back here. What time is it? Oh, it's 20 to 10. Tippy is a puffing around the room. That means that she's wanting something to eat. She's decided it's time to eat. She is so funny, my Tippy. not gluing it down yet because you never know oh that looks kind of pretty with it right there like the two on top of each other and then maybe I don't know a little framed picture here in the corner of some kind not the blue don't like the blue there like a small framed picture or up here to bring it all together. This is going to be all about nature, <laughs> this one I guess, <laughs> which is totally weird for me, totally weird. Let me see, what do I think of this? I kind of like this one sitting next to the other one, just like a whole grouping of mushrooms growing together, you know? I think that's kind of fun. kind of fun. Oh, and I have some good news. Well, good news for me. <laughs> I'll tell you. Um, you know how I get up super, super early to get Cordy out the door. Okay, so now that it's going into the fall, um, I don't have to get up as early. I can sleep in. Which one? Which one? Which one? I can sleep in a little bit. Um, every day so yeah my hours went from uh, like one I would get up between in the summertime I get up depending on what time what part of town he's gonna have to drive to determines how early he has to leave okay so if he has to go to Scottsdale 
he picks up his trailer at Santan Valley and he drives up to Scottsdale. Anybody in Phoenix who lives or lives in Arizona who knows the area would know what I'm talking about. So that's quite a trip, okay, from Santan. So he has to leave Coolidge pretty early on Scottsdale days. So during the summertime, because the sun comes up around, you know, between 5.30 and 6, he would leave here around 4.15, okay? So that would mean I had to get up and, you know, I like to read my Bible and get his lunch and get everything ready for him before he leaves. So I would get up between, um, I wake him up at like 3, so I would get him, I would get up around 1, 1.30, usually between 1.30 and 2, okay? So that's during the summer. Well, now that it's the fall, I can start getting up around 3 o'clock, um, between 3 and 3.30, which is wonderful. I love it, love it so much. I like them there, and then got your little pocket, which you know what I'm gonna do? I don't usually do it, but I just remembered, so I think I will, and since it's a small little pocket, I'm gonna use my little punch, and I'm going to give it a little thumb hole. Okay, so that you can kind of tell it's a pocket, that we have a pocket here. Okay. Hopefully I got that even, kind of close. All right, so now we've got those two little guys. And on the inside, I want to do, I'm gonna do the butterfly. I'm not really sure, should I leave? Should I leave the frame or should I tear it? I think I'm going to tear it. It'll look more, uh, I don't know, grungy fied. I don't know. Not so perfect. It's so squared off and perfect. I love the frames, but I'm always tearing everything anyway. You know me. So. Oh, and we, um,. Another thing we did on Sunday, I probably should have, well, no, I had, I recorded my mass Monday a week early this week. That's why. But okay. On Sunday, the ninth, last Sunday. Okay. For you guys, uh, we watched that new church. My husband told me about in Cass Grand on, um, on the, on YouTube, we watched their live, uh, showing and it was a very good message uh, out of Romans 7. He's teaching out of the book of Romans, like a chapter every week is a new chapter, so he's on chapter 7 this week. It was a really good message. Um, yeah, so I'll be honest with you guys, and I know there will be some that will probably be like, you shouldn't be that way, Tara. Uh, because, I'm, because I'm a singer, and I was in worship teams my whole pretty much my whole life when I'm in church I'm always in a worship team um, and I've been a praise and worship leader I gotta say that they're you know they need some help on their worship uh, as far as like well it just it was rough it was not the best worship as far as musically um, inclined I'll just say that they, they bless them they love the Lord with all their heart you could tell and that's what it's about and I know that their heart but if you go to church and you know what I'm saying it's it can be a little distracting if the person leading the music can't carry a tune um, which was kind of the case and so yeah it was it was I could have enjoyed that a little bit more um, but the message was very biblically based. It was a really good message, and Cordy and I both liked it. And so I told him, you know, let's watch it. Let's watch a few more weeks, and if, if we really feel led by the Spirit, let's go visit in person and see if that's going to be where the Lord wants us to go. So I'll keep you guys posted. Please don't don't judge me for my <laughs> my words about music. Um, I here's how I believe, and I. I could totally be wrong, but it's truly how I believe after being in the ministry for over 20 years. I do believe that everybody is meant to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And I notice I say noise. 
uh, because that's what the Bible says. It says make a joyful noise. It does not say carry a joyful note, okay? Um, but it also, in, in the Word of God, we see that the musicians and the Levites, the ones who led, you know, the praise and worship were singers. And it talks about the quality of their singing. It talks about that in the Bible. It tells us that they were singers. Okay, we're all gifted and anointed with different gifts. And not everyone is gifted and anointed to be uh, on the platform to sing. They are gifted. You are gifted. And you are commanded by the Word of God to give God your worship and, and in song and in praise. However... My point being is that we're not all called to stand up on that platform and preach a sermon, and we're not all called to stand up on that platform and sing a song just because we're told to make a joyful noise. And I think that if you're, you're not gifted in a certain area, either get the training that you need to, you know, to be an excellent example in that area, or work in a different area where you are naturally inclined by the Lord. Okay? That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying, oh, you can't carry a tune. Don't be up there singing. You know, I'm saying, I think that you probably need some training or if it, and if it's really in your heart to be a singer, then you need to get the training you need because, you know, if you weren't given that gift by nature, you know, by God as a, as a natural gift, then um, work on that. You know, work on that because it can be, it can become a hindrance to others. It can be a distraction during the worship. Um, that's what I'm saying. I'm not condemning people or saying don't sing at all because everyone should sing to the Lord. If they, if, if they're a born again Christian and they know that Jesus, they should be singing songs of hope and joy and love to him. He loves our singing, whether we can carry a tune or not, <laughs> but we're, you know what I'm saying though. Obviously, if that person is not gifted in that area, they're gifted in something else. And if they're up there leading praise and worship and they're not gifted in that area, then their gifting is not being used. Um, their, their possible natural gifting that God gave them is not being used to glorify him because they're not where they need to be. That's my point. Does that make sense? I hope that made sense. So... Okay, I want to, what time is it? Okay, we're almost to the end here, guys. I gotta hurry up. I'm on my rant. I just I just said that all because I don't want you guys to think that I, I feel like, like judgy like that because I know that that's not the point of worship is not just because you can sing pretty. I am very much aware of you, but I believe also that you have to be anointed to be preaching a sermon and teaching at the Word of God in a platform situation. And I also believe that you need to be anointed to be leading praise and worship because, you know, they, they, God had the king send out the Levites. He had them send out the musicians ahead of the soldiers when he went to war. Okay. Um, that music needs to be anointed by God. It's very important. It's a very important part of the service. It brings it, it ushers in the presence of our God. And it, you know, you need the anointing upon that. You need his presence upon it. So anyway, I think probably I've made my point. <laughs> I, just, I feel bad because I don't want anybody to think that I'm being mean to people because I'm, I'm not meaning it like that. I just think that those people are lovely and they're sweet and, and I could see their heart in their song. And, you know, the one, <laughs> it was cute. One of them that was singing, there was two of them that sang out of the group, and one of them was a gentleman. And, and it was so funny because he was literally laughing at himself. He was looking at the woman who was playing the piano, and he was breaking out like giggling because I don't think he's, he knows he's not a singer. And I don't know if it was because maybe he was taking someone's place or what, but he was embarrassed. You could tell he was like, you know, he was a piano player too. And he was paying, he was sitting there, and every time he would, the two times he sang, both times, he was like holding back laughter, and it wasn't righteous laughter. It was it was embarrassment. You could tell by the look on his face, and I felt bad for him. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, because he could hear himself singing, and he knows he's not a singer. And for whatever reason, they had him leading a couple of songs, and I don't know if she was trying 
maybe she was trying to encourage him to to start you know leading praise and worship with her or something um that's a possibility you know it was funny though because he was cute he was very sweet he was very sweet so yeah my husband was laughing though he was like huh can you see him laughing <laughs> <He's>, I know. <laughs> He's not comfortable doing what he's doing right now. So, but you know what? We work with what we've got to work with. And it's like I told my husband, you know, you never know. Those are the kind of things maybe the Lord would use me to, to help him. You know, I, I've done that before with other, you know, been assigned to, to lead sections and different stuff to kind of do some training with them on their vocals, you know, and, uh, you never know. I, I think when you go to a church, you don't go there looking for it to be perfect for you. You go there and then you look at where you can be used to help them. And so that's why I said, I told my husband, you never know. I mean, I, maybe I would end up doing some teaching with them on their vocals. I mean, if God took us there. There is that. Not bad, right? It looks pretty cute. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. There's our little paper writing parts. And I don't know that I have, let's see, I have worked on a few tags, but I don't think I have anything that would really, yeah. I don't have anything ready that would go in here yet. But now that I've done this, I will take some of the tags that we made and I will I'll decorate them to kind of match this and, and put them in. Yeah. So there's my little, my little notebook. I hope you liked it today. Um, I hope you guys have a blessed day and I will see you all tomorrow. I love you very much. Take care. Bye, guys.